Hello all. Today we will see how to set up the Oracle 19C data guard. In this particular tutorial, I'll cover step by step setup of Oracle 19C data guard. This particular tutorial is divided into three videos. In the first video, I'll be setting up the primary. I'll create a primary database, create standby from primary using RMAN, and I will be enabling the MRP or the data guard. And finally, I will be testing the data guard log shipping whether the logs are shipped or the archive logs are applied on the standby so we will verify that in this particular tutorial in the second video i will enable the data guard broker and i will set up the fast start failover in the second video and in the third video what i will do is like i will add a third standby so multiple standbys two standbys we will configure two standbys in the third video so that is what we are going to do in this particular tutorial so i'll divide this particular tutorial in three parts first setting the mrp between primary and standby second start uh, set up the broker and fast start failover third in third video we will set up the third standby my setup is i have got oracle 19c and i'm using oracle linux 7.8 i have used two linux boxes db1 and db2 this particular document will be shared with you so you can always refer this document in future if you want and i will also share the scripts used along with this particular document i'll put the link to this particular document in the description of the youtube video the make sure that the both the servers and machines are able to communicate with each other there is no firewall blocking between these two machines make sure that the, what I will not cover is I will not cover how to install the Oracle 19C database software and how to install the operating system. I will not cover that. Again, I am I'm using VirtualBox for this particular environment. So my environment is built on the VirtualBox. To set up the data guard, we need to create the primary. So I'll create a primary database. I will set the primary database in archive log mode, enable the force logging, enable the flashback on, set the DB unique name then create the p file and configure the listener and tns names.ora file this is important you can have the same db unique name for the primary and standby can have a different unique name but i would prefer like you know if you can keep the the unique name on the primary different so that you know what where that particular database is or what kind of if it might be in a primary database uh, data center so you can configure the db unique name so if you see how I have done it is like I got primary first and by second and by as I mentioned this one will be done in the third video in this particular video I'll set up the primary and the first and by so the database name remains same instance name remains same the unique name for the primary will be or P the standby will be or is I am using three host the first host is db1 so primary is hosted the or P is hosted on db1 or s is hosted on db2 and second third second set by or third database is hosted on db3 once we have set up all of these parameters flashback on archive logging what i will do is like i will this p file that we created i will transfer it to the standby and i will modify that p file only two parameters i will modify i will uh, i will show what parameters i am modifying that's all captured in another text file i will show you that text file as and when we go along so we will modify two parameters we will start the database in no mount mode we will be using rman active duplication to do this particular duplication and the primary database should be connected as target and standby database should be connected as auxiliary and we will be using this particular command rman duplicate target database for standby this particular command will be using once the duplication rman duplication happens we will uh, we will create the standby control file on the standby then we will be setting on the primary we will be setting some data guard parameters such as log arc dash one so this is for local archiving this is for the remote archiving or the standby service the log archive config we will set the dg config the fail client fail server we will also set the standby file management as auto and we will configure the standby redo logs srl files on the standby so whatever we have done here exactly same thing we will do on the standby and only thing is like this now will be local archiving this will now point to the standby service of the primary log archive config we will config the dg config parameter to include both the db unique names 
set the file client again local set file server to the remote standby file management to auto configure the standby to logs and start the mrp when we start the mrp at this moment our data card should be working our logs from the primary should be shipped to the standby and whatever transactions we do at the primary they should appear on the standby so the testing on the primary perform some transactions and verify that transactions on primary have appeared on the standby so we will do some testing the next part of this particular document is on the setting up of the data guard setting up the enable fast failover and add third standby which i will cover in the next tutorial next video so i will not talk about that in this particular tutorial so let's start with our steps so what we are going to do the first step is you know to create the database so we have to create the database that is our first step so let's go and follow this particular document so what i'll do is i have as i mentioned i have two hosts db1 and db2 so let me connect to that host so this is the db1 and this is the db2 so i'm connected to two hosts you can see the host name here is db1 the host name is db2 so i've connected to these two boxes the the first thing that i need to do is i need to set up create some directories this is where my database files will be there this is my fast recovery area and this is my archive location you can use the directories of your choice i have used this way so let me paste all of this and that's done the directories are created again the directories are created as oracle user because the database will be created as oracle user so the database needs to be the the data files needs to be created so make sure that if any user other user is creating this directory make sure you change the permission to oracle user the next thing that we will be doing is we will be starting our listener so i will set start my listener so this is the listener file i will show you the configuration of my listener uh, so let's do that so so you will come to know how my listener is set up so you can see i got listener v19 so i got one listener and that's running on host db1 so similarly i got another if the listener name can be anything it's your choice you don't have to follow the exact same but if you want to follow like you don't want to do mistakes you can follow the exact steps in my document so that you don't get confused and everything works this particular setup has been tested so it will work if you do exactly what i am doing if you follow my steps it's going to work it's it's literally it's been tested multiple times so this is going to work so if if I, i'll show you the same uh, here as well okay i did get twice okay so you can see this particular listener v19 is on db2 and i'm using port 1522 i have done the static listener registration so that you know this particular service the sid is registered so that i have also done the tns names.ora file i will show you that as well that is the next file so i will show you that as well so you can okay let me uh, clear my screen and get it this particular entry is not required so we need an entry for ora p and ora s ora p refers to db1 port 152 ora s refers to db2 port 152 all of these things are captured in this particular document which i will be sharing you can see here how my listener looks like and everything that's already captured here and this particular document will be uploaded so you can always refer this particular document the the next step is we uh, i have to show you the listener the tns names dot aura file on the primary as well exactly same the aura p refers to the primary or and aura s refers to the standby so you can see port remains same so this is i have kept you know i have kept everything very simple like you know aura p db1 port same port aura s db2 port same port in your production environment this may not be true so you might have to change these values but to set up this particular environment in your in your uh, lab you you just have to follow these particular steps as mentioned in my document so the listener i'm going to start the listener on the primary and if my i might forget it on the standby so let me start the listener on the standby as well so that i don't forget it so where are, where was i so i'm i'm on this particular step and i'm going to start the listener on standby as well this can be done at a later point in time but i might forget it so i'm going to start the listener on primary as well as on the standby so i've done that the next thing that we need to do is 
I have to create the primary database. The primary database that I'm going to create is using the DBCA response file. I'll show you that file how it looks like. I have configured the database name as Aura. So that's and you know the general purpose template. So whatever you can use the DBCA GUI method or you can create your database using SQL plus the choice is yours. I have used the silent method. So I will go to this particular location and I will show you how that file looks like. So you know this is the file that I have used. So the response file version the the name of the database. So I'm going to create the database using the DBCA silent mode. And this particular step is going to take some time. So uh, let me let me just try to create the database. It's going to give the warnings, the startup of Oracle restart. This should, this is fine uh, because you know this particular box has ASM and I have not started the ASM. So this particular me message says that this particular database will not be registered with ASM, and I'm okay with it. I don't need because I'm going to create this particular database in local file system. The you can see here uh, the okay sorry you can see here the the data file destination is mentioned as DBD aura data aura so this is where is going to create the database so let me do one thing let me go to DB sorry let me go to DB one go to this particular location and let's see if our database and you can see the system and sysox system and sysox created so once that is done it will create the users and undo table space so let's give it a minute uh, and see uh, it's still at 10 percent so this particular step is slightly big so that's done 40 percent done let's see okay so it has created undo and users table space so that's done so while while it is doing next step that we will be running the next script that we'll be running i'll show you that script so let me go to the home location so the next part that I will be doing is once the database is created, I will be running this particular script. So let me do this and I'll show you what this particular script is doing. So if the database is not running in the SP file, we'll create the SP file. If it is running already, then, then this particular step will fail, which is fine. Then we'll shut down the database. If it is running on P file, then we'll create the SP file, shut and start the database, which means the next time when we start the database, it will start running on SP file. But if your database is already running on SP file, then this particular restart is not required. I have just added it so that, you know, if there are like just to, I don't want to waste time. So that's why I've added this step. Set the DB unique name. See my document here. So I am setting the DB unique name as ORAP. By default, when the database is created, the database the DB unique name will be Aura. Of course, I could have changed this in the DBCA when I created the database. I could have added that, but I just wanted to show you how to change the DB name afterwards. So using this particular command, we will be changing the DB name. We will be, if the DB recovery dash file is set, then we will be resetting it. If it is not set, then that's not a problem. This particular command will fail, which is not a problem. The log arc dash one, I'm going to set to the local archive. So this is the local archive location, which I've already created. And this is the local archiving. Then I will shut down, start up the database in mount mode because we need to convert the database in archive log. Once that is done, I will open the database, verify that it is in archive log list. Then I will enable the force logging the local listener i will set the local listener to local uh, host name and the port number then i will set some of the recovery dash area so fra i will enable the flashback i'll set the flashback retention target and turn on the flashback and start and stop the database and then create p file from sp file why i need to start and stop the database because some of these parameters are modified in the sp file only so we need to start and stop this particular uh, database to make sure that those parameters are written to SP file and then finally I will create the P file from SP file. This particular P file will be transferred to the standby and we will create we will create our instance but the database will be duplicated using the RMAN active duplication. So let's see where is our database so 66% so we still have time. So what once this particular script is done what we will be doing is then I will once the primary is created then what i will be doing is i will be so uh, so once the primary is created i will be restoring the database to so before restoring the database i will whatever the init file if you see in this particular last 
script I mentioned that we'll be creating the init file or the p file. That particular p file I'll transfer to the standby or the second node db2. I will transfer the aura password file to the second node. So that I will do. In the init aura file, I will only do two changes. Remember, I will only do the two changes. I will change the db unique name from aura p to aura s and I will change the local listener. Uh, if you see here, local listener refers to host1152, which I will change it to db2152. So these are the only two changes that I will do in the init aura file. I will add an entry in the etc aura tab on the node 2. So I will add the entry for node 2. Then what I will be doing is I will be editing the TNS names and listener.aura. This has already been done. This step has already been done and I have shown you how that listener configuration looks like, how the TNS names.aura looks like. And in this particular document that those listener aura configuration, TNS names aura dot configurations are also captured. So you can always refer the video or you can always refer this particular document. And finally, I will start the listener, which I have already done on the standby. Once the init file is copied, the password file is copied, the listener has started, then we will be creating some of these directories and then I will start the database in no mount mode using the init aura file that I had transferred and modified. Then I will go to the primary. So run this duplicate command from primary. Here everything is captured. Just follow the document. So connecting to the primary as target, connecting to the auxiliary as standby. If you see here, I captured that. You have to connect the primary database as target, standby database as the auxiliary, and we will be running rman duplicate target database. So this is the command that I will be running. So let's, uh, let's see. Okay, so the database is created. So now the database is created. So what we are going to do is the first script. So this is the first script that we are going to run. So we are going to, uh set the we will okay so this is archive log archive logging force logging flashback fra that's it so and finally create p file so these are the things that is happening in and look i'm setting the log arc dash one low for local archiving so and changing the db unique name to the or rp so before doing that what i will do you know i will connect to this particular database from my SQL developer. So, or uh, so this is on DB1. So, let me put the password sys. Password is password, and this will be sysdbs save. So, this one will be on DB1 port. As I mentioned, it is 1522, and SID is aura. Test it, it should get connected. Success, connect it, and then I will verify my configuration. So, let's do this. Let me run this particular query here select name and you can see the name of the database is aura unique name is aura so which we will be changing to aura p that it's in read write mode log uh, mode is no flashback on is no force logging is no this particular script this particular script is going to change these three things Ar from no archive log it will be archive log flashback on will be from no to s and force logging from no to s and db name from aura to aura p so this is what this particular script is going to do so let me do one let me do one thing let me can connect to this particular database so on node one so clear aura env aura so that's done then six uh sql plus as sys dba and this is a script that i will run at this so create sp file cannot create sp file already being used by the instance which means the database is running on sp file so no problem this particular step failed is going to stop and start the database then is going to try to reset the Okay, then it's going to reset the DB request and this step is also going to fail. Then it's going to do all of this. And then finally, it will start and stop and create P file from SP file. So it starts and stops one time and two times. So it's going to take some time. So let's see database not mounted 
and you can see everything is aura 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 so this one stopped so let's see if it gets converted into archive log just give it a minute so the instance is shut down it's going to start up the database in mount mode not i'm not starting the full database so so that's done archive log is enabled so now it is in archive mode this is the local archive destination so that's done some of the parameters altered system altered database altered again it stopped and started and finally what's going to do is is going to create the p file so file created so and once that is done i'm going to connect this particular database from here and you see the information here will change this one will change to aura p this one will change to archive log this one will change to s this one will change to s so i'm just waiting for this s done so let me rerun this particular script and see what happens okay and you can see the db unique name changed to aura p from no archive log it is now in archive log flashback on is yes and post logging is yes so this particular script is done so the first part is done so the next part that we are going to do so the database created is done some settings on the primary are done so now we are going to send the files so i already set the aura env i can set it again so clear aura env aura so that's done and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to send this particular files to the standby so this is done so before doing that let me show you if i have any files on standby so let me go back exit so i was on node one so this is done and if i do this i'm on node two now ls minus l and you can see i do not have the init file neither i have the uh neither i have the password file so i'm going to send the those from the primary so i'm going to do that so that's done that's done and i'll come here and i'll show you those files are here now i mentioned here in the document that i need to do only two changes the db unique name from aura p to aura s and local listener i'll be changing the local listener to db2152 this is the only change that i'll be doing in this particular file so let's open this particular file okay and search for db unique name i always okay so i found a local listener so i'll change it to this i need to change it to two so that's done and this one i need to, to change it to s so these are the only two changes i need to do so i've done that okay so let's verify catch init or a grep minus a unique oh, sorry unique and you can see that udb unique name is okay so this is for the services so this leave that so db unique name is aura s and the another parameter was listener so let's see that and local listener is now db2152 so these are the two changes that i have done so we are good now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, i i have already transferred this i'm going to now start my standby okay so before doing that i need to add an entry in etc order type i always forget this so let's add that entry as well so let's add an entry in etc order tab so let's do that so this is done now what so we have till now our primary is created we have set up some primary and parameters such as archive log flashback on and force logging nothing else we have done now what we are going to do is we are going to do the rman restore before doing the rman restore i need to start my database so let me create some of the directories for the standby so that's done so i created the directories set my environmental variable so aura env aura so why okay why okay so i added right i added the etc aura tab so even after adding it's still asking me oracle home for what reason okay something happened okay okay that's fine i think something happened so let me do one thing let me restart this session okay i'll close it not a problem i'll restart this particular session so i'm going to connect to the node 2 aura env and aura 
okay this works fine now good so something messed up no problem so now what i'll do is i will connect i'll go to cd dollar oracle home slash dbs ls minus l i'm going to start the database with this p file so and i will start the database in no mount mode because we need to restore it so connected to idle instance startup no mount mode so i'm going to start my database in no mount mode so that's done now i'll go to the primary i have mentioned it here we have to run the target duplicate command from the primary so let me run this make sure your listener or the primary and standby is up and running i have already done it so now this is our litmus test this is our final test if this works this if you are able to connect Armen, so then our configuration okay so connected to target database which is in open mode and aura auxiliary database which is our standby database this is already captured in here document you see primary database should be connected as target and standby database should be connected as the auxiliary so i'll show you my step Armen target aura p which is my primary and aura s which is my standby i can this is done via the tns entry so tns ping aura p so you can see it is pointing to db1 on port 152 and aura s is pointing to db2 on port 152 okay so this is how it is done so let me clear the screen and run the rman command now the rman sessions are connected to primary and standby the R duplicate target database okay so only thing that i'm changing here is db unique name this particular command if it works our half work is done in fact our 90 percent work is done so if this particular duplication happens then rest all is just setting up some parameters so let's let's hope for the best and run that particular command so i'm going to hit the enter and starting the duplication so duplicate target database for standby from active database sp file so that's done so let's go to our standby Okay, let me go to the location CD DBI Aura Data. Sorry, not DBI DBD Aura Data slash DB uh, slash Aura Aura LS minus L. And as of now, I don't see the system file, undo file, anything. So let's wait for the duplication to happen. Nothing has appeared as of now. So using network, yeah, control file it has restored. So let's look at the control files. Yes, control files have appeared. Then a system file has is, should also appear. So you can see the system file has also appeared. So the restore is working. Once the restore is done, we have two more scripts. So we have to set up the, we have to configure the data card parameter at the primary and we have to configure the data card parameter at the standby and we are going to start our mrp now what i'm going to do is i'm going to once this duplication happens if this okay finish duplicate this is also good news the duplication has happened now the next part is let me go to home directory cd data guard and the next part that next script that i'll be running is this on the primary and the next script that i will be running on the standby is this one so let me put here so here if you see what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the standby redo logs i am going to this one already set no harm in setting up again i'm i'll be setting the local archive to standby service or is i'll be setting the log archive config the db unique name of the primary the db unique name of the standby i will be enabling the both the log archive destinations switching the log file archive log current fail client i will set to local server which is orapi local unique name fail server to the standby standby file management to auto and the per the mode that i'll be using is maximum performance then i will be shutting down the database starting up it and create p file and we will verify whether our database is in the data guard configuration it is whether it has enabled same thing 
is I'm going to do here. But first thing that I'll be doing is create standby control file. If you see here, I mentioned the create standby control file so that we will be doing. Then I will be adding the redo logs, the standby redo logs on the standby, setting up the lo local log arc dash one, setting up the log arc dash two. This one now points to aura p. Here it points to aura s, the standby. So this one. This, low, this destination is to the standby. This destination is to the primary. So the again, this fail client here is RIS. Here, fail client is RAP. So these are some of the parameters. The local listener I have already set, but I'll be changing it again. And standby file management, auto. And finally, what I will be doing is I will be starting the MRP using this particular command. Alter database, recover, manage, trend by database using current log file disconnect from session. So using this particular command, I will be starting the MRP. And once that is done, using this particular command, we will see the database role and switch over status. So this is this is what I'm going to do on the primary. And these things can be done in parallel. So let's do that in parallel. So let me clear my screen. Let me take the note of the script. So aura env, aura SQL plus as sysdba at the primary script. So that's running. Go to the standby. Take a note of standby script. Aura env. Aura SQL plus as sysdba at standby. So that's done. So I've initiated the script on both the nodes. There is no harm. Those these particular scripts are not related. So you know it's going to set this data guard parameter. So this is this particular part on the primary set the data guard parameters. On the standby set the data guard parameter. Again, all of this information is captured here. You can see it's captured in this particular text file, which I will be sharing with you. So you can always refer this particular file. So what script I ran on the primary, what script I ran on the standby is everything is captured here. And once we we are we let's okay, let's once all of this is done, we, we will run our some of the testing to verify that the records are flowing. So let's see. Okay, so failed destination. The reason why we got the failed destination because still now the configuration on standby is not at done. The we started this script on standby a little late. So that's waiting. Once the standby comes up, then we are going to run this particular script. So now what I'll do is I will put I will put this get script here and I will also create another entry. So this one pointing to DB2. So DB2 and Sid with same. So now let's see the test whether it says connect. Let's see if it, I'm able to connect. So not okay. So looks like okay. So let's run this and not allowed, which is fine. Physical standby read only with apply here i'm going to run this particular command and let's see what happens and you can see switch over status is to standby database role is primary and here the database role is physical standby which means looks like our data guard is set up the mrp is also running now the final test what i'm going to do is i'm going to clear create some transactions so before creating some transactions, let me see if I have a table called test one. So the table does not exist. The standby. So let me. This is my standby. So let's see whether I got okay. So and you can see this on standby also. I do not have the table. So this is you know show parameter name. So show parameter name. So this is aura s the standby and this is in the green aura p the primary. So on the primary I'm going to create the table insert some records and then switch the log file and archive the log file. So host clear and I'm going to run this. So and you can see there are two records 
let's run this particular script on here and you can see those two records have appeared on our standby so which means the whatever we inserted the table that we created that table got created and whatever records we inserted that also got created now i will delete those records 52 and 56 i will delete those records and i will add four more records just to prove that it is still working so let's do that that's done and you know something happened so that's fine i think uh, value too large okay i think this one is too big so that's fine three records so now i'll run this particular command here and you can see three records 53 54 61 53 54 61 so our data guard is working so this was the you know this was the tutorial on how to set up the step by step setup you know and we have successfully set up the data guard environment between the primary and standby the most important part is setting up the db unique name then doing the active duplication configuring the data guard parameters on the primary and configuring the data guard parameters on the standby and the difficult part is the configuration of the listener and tns names.orup file so once the connectivity is established then your data guard should work so I hope this particular tutorial was useful. I will, as I mentioned, this particular video series is divided into three uh, setups, three videos. The next, in the next video, what we will be seeing is how to enable the data guard broker and how to enable the fast start failover. And in the third video, we will see how to add the third standby. I hope you like this particular video. Uh, do subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, please pass put the comments or hit the like button tell me if anything you did not understand or you know if if you need any kind of help just put it in the comment and when i get time i will respond to your comments thank you for watching see you in next tutorial bye bye